Off Ampra Harbor, another barge is waiting to dock at the Guam shipyard and take another load of Watts's concrete products to Hawaii. Acting Port General Manager Rick Augustine declined an on-camera interview, but today told PNC News that that barge has not been allowed to enter the harbor until final agreement has been reached over future shipments of Watts's concrete poles and blocks from the Guam shipyard. Augustine said, we have not given the green light yet, but in concept, that is what the deal is. The controversy began in August when a nearly $5 million load from Watts's agate precast yard was loaded and left from the Guam shipyard destined for a military construction project in Hawaii. Customs documents show the cargo was listed as military, but Augustine put that misrepresentation to rest by confirming that it was not military, but commercial cargo destined for a construction project for the military in Hawaii. As for the deal in the works now, the port, he says, is going to be in control of any future Watts shipments from the shipyard, and most importantly, he said, the port will capture all revenue, including, he said, the lost revenue on the first load. Those amounts are still under negotiation. Senator James Espaldon, who first blew the whistle on the unauthorized shipment from the Guam shipyard, estimates that the port lost as much as $100,000 in revenue when Watts sent its first load out from the shipyard. He is not reassured by news of the deal in the works because it would bend the law requiring all commercial cargo to go in and out of the commercial port. My concerns are definitely the same. And besides that, by law, by law, the Port Authority of Guam is where all consumer goods come in and out of this island, right? Now, if there's going to be some skirting of that and claim that this is uh, specialized, uh, sensitive military cargo, well then I'm not really sure, first of all, that that's true because we're talking about concrete poles. There has been speculation that the reason why Watts bypassed the port in the first place is because the port did not have the capability to load the 140-foot concrete poles. Not true, said Augustine to PNC News. We could have done it. We had cleared an area and we were waiting for the arrival of the poles but the cargo never came over, he said. Senator Tom Adda, who chairs the legislature's transportation committee, says he has been briefed by Augustine on the negotiations and what the port is proposing to do. According to Mr. Augustine, there was no subsequent discussion about change of plans in going to the Guam shipyard. You know, what happened there, really, um, I, I guess the important point is that, hey, look, you know, eventually these things get found out and uh, there's, there's a price to pay for that, so uh, we just need to move forward in a positive manner. One other item on the table in the port's negotiations with Watts and the shipyard is requiring the use of Port of Guam stevedores and equipment operators in the loading. These workers lost money too when Watts sent its first load through the shipyard in August. Senator Matt Rector's union, the Guam Federation of Teachers, is negotiating the first union contract for them. His judgment of the deal is more blunt. We've invested year after year, and not just in the equipment, but in the training of stevedores and equipment operators and transportation people and port security, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've invested in that infrastructure. When somebody goes around it, you're robbing the people of Guam, not just of the salaries of the stevedores, but all the other fees involved as well. This is bad business, and really, I think someone should go to jail. Kevin Kerrigan, PNC News.